So this is my achievement up to this point for train. Here my train has four level of detail and depend on which one is closer to camera, they are going to change their level of detail. Also where the level of detail is going to change, the vertices in edges match the vertices with upper LOD level. And how much take to update this train each time? Well you can see here around 30 to 40 microseconds which almost is nothing. Here you can also adjust the level of detail distance by yourself with no problem. Also the size of the train has no limit. Anyway, that is not finished yet. And I need to test that more and also I should still add more things to this to be able to use that for a real train. Before that I tell you how this thing work, let me tell you a brief story of train in Godot and how this idea come to my mind. Usually train is the biggest mesh in your game and it is not possible to show the train at each point with same level of detail. No computer can handle this. And despite Godot is an amazing open source engine, but one important thing that it does not have is a good train system. In Godot 3, a plugin which is called Zilen Height Map Train was introduced for making train in Godot. It was good and the developer behind that plugin put a lot of effort in that plugin. If you look at Zilen Train in wireframe, you can see it also adjusts the level of detail like what I have did. Unfortunately, this plugin is not ported to Godot 4. I first looked at this plugin to get some idea to what to do. But this plugin contains thousands of codes. And I have no time to read them all. I thought to use other methods like using tessellation shader in Unreal Engine. But unfortunately, Godot does not support tessellation shader. There are some guys on GitHub which they want to add this feature to Godot, but still this shader is not implemented yet in Godot. Another method can be using compute shader. Godot 4 support compute shader. So how about generating our train with that? The problem with compute shader right now is that you don't have access to memory buffer which the data of mesh is stored. So right now the only way to do that is to generate train mesh in compute shader, retrieve the generated mesh by CPU and put that to RAM and then finally send it back to GPU memory to be shown. And I don't think this is possible. Sending information between CPU and GPU will take time and I don't think this will be efficient. There is a guy which is called Clay John which is wrote on GitHub that they are going to allow memory sharing between main rendering device and compute shader in future Godot version. But at this time which Godot 4.1 dev is came out, there is no sign of adding this feature. Maybe in Godot 4.2 they will add that. There is another guy in YouTube which is called DevMar implement another method to create large train. He basically create one unique big mesh which at center has more geometry. And he just move this train with player in game and while moving that train, he also move UV coordinate of that train to make the shape of train fixed. If you want to know more about him, I put the video link which he made down in the description. I think there are two big problem with the method with Devmar implemented. First, when you make the entire terrain to one mesh, you always render all the train, even the train which is behind you. First, I tried this method, but I just divided my mesh into chunks of 32 meter by 32 meter. For a train about 1000 square meter, you also need 1000 pieces of the train. And if you want to move all of them with the player, that will cause many, many problems. The other problem with Devmar method is that because you make your train uniquely like this in Blender, this is good when your player is on ground. But when you go up, your train will have the same level of detail at center like before. Despite you are far from train. But as you can see, in the train that I implemented, if you go up, the level of detail of the train is also changed. In January of 2023, Yuan, the lead developer of Godot engine, wrote a tweet about making big train in Godot. After that, a discussion page has been opened in GitHub about making train. Here there are a lot of discussion about how to implement a good train in Godot. So I don't know what other developer achieved up to this point. And if other people made something better than me, I will be very happy about that. But this is how I made my train. So I want to solve our problem step by step. 
I mean, I want first to solve one problem and then go to the next one. Also, as I don't have lots of time, I want to create very simple and efficient code which everyone understands. So first problem, making a train with level of detail system which consists of many chunks. I mean, it is not a unique mesh. So when the player look in a certain direction, the chunk behind him will be called and not rendered. So what I did first, I created a small piece of train with different level of detail. And then in game, I calculate the distance of each chunk to camera. Then I set the level of detail of that chunk based on the distance to the camera. But there is a big problem with this method. And that is in edge of each chunk. Look at this here. We have two chunks with different level of detail. As you can see, one of them has an extra vertex in edge. And this will cause problem later. For example, look here. There is a gap between edges. So what we can do? Before answering that, let me tell you how I solved this problem. A paper published in year 2000 which is called Fast Train Rendering Using Geometrical Mip Mapping. In that paper explained how to connect two chunks with different level of detail. And thanks to OGL Dev YouTube channel which explained well this method. So here as you can see, I designed each of my chunk like a fan. And I did not do that by chance. If you design each chunk like this, in edges you can drop this vertex and the two chunk will match together. In OGL Dev YouTube channel, he generate these chunks by using code. But I come up with different approach to this method. Here instead I create each chunk in Blender. I also make all different possible edge possible for each level of detail. Please note I don't want to rotate chunks and I have my own reason for that which maybe in later video I will tell about that. Considering that, we have 14 possible chunk mesh for each level of detail. And there are 57 different chunk types for all level of details. So I made all of them inside Blender and then I export them into Godot. Then here, first I determine the level of detail of each chunk without setting the mesh. Then after I check the level of detail at each point and also I check the level of detail of its neighbors. And based on those things, I set the correct mesh to that point. But there is another problem. Calculating all of these things in each frame is expensive. And the answer to that is we don't have to calculate all of this at each frame. I calculate all of these in a different CPU thread. What this CPU thread does after finishing each calculation, it is going to prepare a list containing all the mesh instance 3D that should change and also another list which is its corresponding meshes. After that, we should just update each chunk that should change. Also for better optimization, I did not use mesh instance 3D node. I directly sent these changes to rendering server. Finally, I have this result which work very good. But what should I do next? First of all, if you look at our calculation, we calculate the distance of the camera to each chunk in a grid. And later I just calculate the correct mesh at each chunk based on its neighbors. So you can see a lot of separated calculation. Well, we can bring all of this on compute shader and that will calculate everything extremely fast. But as everything now is working fast right now, even with this method, I am not sure it works to do that with compute shader. You tell me your idea about this in comment section. Other thing is that, Right now, I calculate the distance of a camera to each chunk when it is on the ground. But later, we want to change the height of this chunk with height map. So definitely, we should consider the height of each chunk for calculation the distance to the camera. But what if I want to create a cliff? On that case, the difference of height even in one chunk is a lot. So which is the correct distance here? I think I'm going to make everything more simple and calculate the distance to the average height of each chunk. Otherwise, my code will be very complex. And finally, there is another thing that I should correct. Because of the structure of this method, for example, we cannot go from LOD0 to LOD2. We have the permission to go from LOD0 to LOD1 and so on. And right now, because I set the distance between each LOD much bigger than each chunk size, this will work perfectly without any problem. But I don't know if there is a situation which this can cause problem. Please tell me your idea about that 
if you have any. And finally, if this thing work, I start to add another thing to my train system. For example, grass and vegetation. But I don't think I'm going to create a height map editor for this, at least for now. Instead, I'm going to use external height map editor like Blender, Word Creator, Gaia, and the free one L3DT, which is also very good. That is because these programs are really powerful. And for now, me, which I am only one person, I cannot compete with those. But I am not discouraged you guys to create something similar if you can. So that is about train in Godot for now. I'm still working on my train system and I hope you like this video. Have a good time until the next video. Bye.